Hello, Electroheads. By the end of this video, you will be in love with a car. Objection! Unhealthy! Side note though, before we get started, I haven't produced a video on this channel in about three months and not a single commenter has asked where I've been. Hello, darkness, my old friend. But I'm back and I'm here to talk to you about the most exciting electric car so far. If you are an electric car enthusiast, then it's likely that you will have had a conversation with a friend that goes a little something like this. I do want an electric car, but the range of electric cars just isn't good enough. Well, actually, many electric cars have a range of over 250 miles now, which is longer than you can hold your pee in for. Oh, okay, well, um, my budget is 20,000 pounds. What can I get? Oh my God, what's that over there? What? This has happened to me many, many times, and I'm quite frankly bored of commando rolling away from conversation. And thankfully, I no longer need to. Many of the world's largest auto manufacturers are coming to market in the next couple of years with electric hatchbacks that cost 25k and have 250 miles of range. A company in Germany is coming to the market with a car that's much more usable than a hatchback, has up to 600 kilometers of range, and costs 17 and a half thousand pounds. That's what I'm talking about. That's about 23,000 US dollars. 20,000 euros or 534,689,354 Vietnamese dong. We've actually covered this car on the channel before in videos about the most exciting electric cars coming to the market soon, but it deserves its own video. There aren't actually many YouTube videos on this car, and if the marketing is to be believed, I think this could be one of the most important cars that comes out in the next decade. I'm talking about the mighty, the wonderful, the adorable X-Bus. Look at this thing. Don't you just want to give it a little hug? It's a modular vehicle that can be a pickup truck, a camper van, a surf wagon, a people carrier. It can do everything. The X-Bus first caught my attention when I was looking into solar powered vehicles. The roof of the X-Bus is covered in solar cells, which provide an additional source of energy alongside plug-in charging. It's a bit like the Sono Motor Scion, a car I told my former colleague Jack about, who then, left to join Fully Charged and then went to Germany and did his own video on the Sono Motor Scion. Thanks for the invite, Jack. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I do think solar will be an important part of our automotive future. As electroheads, we have to accept the fact that the range of electric cars is prohibitive for certain uses like long distance haulage. Hydrogen is being touted as something that could complement electric batteries, but solar energy has had very little airtime and I can't really work out why that is. Is it maybe because energy companies can't make money off of it because it's a free source of energy? That can't be it. Brands like Lightyear, whose uh, CEO Lex Hoofslut I'm basically best friends with, are engineering a car that can run mainly on solar power. But for the X-Bus, it's more like a trickle charger, perfect for extending range throughout the day. This could actually be quite a big deal for those days where you're pootling to and from work in the morning and in the evening, perhaps traveling around 10 miles each way and getting all of that energy from the sun alone. I'm sold on this thing, so let me tell you more about it and let me try and sell you on it. And please do let me know what you think of the car. Drop a comment below. Tell me everything you think about this video. Treat me as though I'm your personal therapist. If nobody's told you that you look good recently, then you are beautiful and you are worthy. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I don't know where I'm going with this other than that uh, I, I love you. First of all, the reason I love this car is its modularity. That's a big word. Electric cars provide us with an opportunity to rethink car design from the ground up, as my best friend and Polestar CEO, Thomas Ingenlath, recently told me. There are already loads of cool companies out there building proprietary modular platforms that can be licensed to other companies. So these companies will build the little modular skateboardy thing with the motor and the battery on, and that can be extended if you want to place a chassis for a hatchback on top of it, or an SUV, or a van, or a lorry, it could be extended out in all four directions. The X-Bus works on a similar platform. It's basically a big electric skateboard with a cab for a driver and a passenger. What you then do with the rest of the space behind the cab is almost entirely up to you. If you want a king cab with two extra seats behind you and then a flatbed, you can do that. If you want a camper van with a pop-up roof, you can do that as well. Another cool aspect of electrification is that there is no need for a traditional analog steering column. The X-Bus's steering is completely electronic. It's, it's a bit like a PlayStation. You can easily change the steering wheel from the left-hand side to the right-hand side of the car 
without having to move an entire steering column. What this means is that you don't need separate production lines or factories for cars that are going to the UK and the rest of Europe or America and Japan. Somebody has raised the concern to me of what happens if you have an electrical failure whilst you're driving and then you won't be able to steer. I think when it comes to electric cars, if you have electrical failure, you're basically f***ed anyway. So let's just move on from that one. All of these different modular passenger configurations are really cool, but it's also customizable under the hood, so to speak. Let's take a look under the hood. The base model has eight batteries providing up to 200 kilometers of range, but you can buy extra batteries in sets of four and get up to 24 batteries in the car. This would provide you up to 600 kilometers of range. Whilst this might not seem like the most exciting development in the world, I think it's actually a bit of a glimpse into the future. So be thou anointed and consecrated king. It's a step towards the future where we might own an electric car, but we might not necessarily own all of the batteries that are in that car. If I could own eight batteries and get 200 kilometers of range for most of the year round, but then when I go on my holiday to Scotland, I could rent an additional eight or 16 batteries and get more range, then that would solve a huge problem we have in the car market. And that problem is that most people buy a car based on their most extreme use case. If you can only afford one car and 95% of the time you're doing no more than 100 miles in a week, but every now and then you make a 300 mile trip to see your in-laws, then you'll buy a car that's capable of making that 300 mile trip without needing to be charged. That means for 95% of the time, you're buying a car that's way heavier than it needs to be and way less efficient than it needs to be. Electric SUVs can weigh up to two tons, for example. The basic Exva starting weight is 500 kilograms without batteries. So when you add those batteries in, it's gonna be just around a ton rather than two tons. It will be similar in weight to a Mark 1 Mazda MX-5. That makes it far more efficient, especially when you factor in those solar cells on the roof. And there's plenty more to love about this car, not least that it looks absolutely awesome and it's made out of parts that are 95% recyclable. It feels like a lifetime ago that VW teased us with their electric camper van concept, the VW ID Buzz. That concept could be materializing soon, but rumor has it that the actual car that will be delivered won't be anywhere near as funky as the original concept. The Xbus has come along and saved the day for those of us who like quirky little cars over bloated SUVs and weird hatchback crossovers. It's not all good news, I'll be honest. Uh, when I first looked at the Xbus website a few months ago, the top speed was claimed to be around 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, which would have you basically overtaken by lorries if you ever took it on a motorway. That's just depressing. And to achieve the efficiency claimed by the Xbus, then the 0-60 time would basically be about the length of this YouTube video. That said, this original data seems to have disappeared from the Xbus website and has been replaced by a claim that the speed will be over 100 kilometers or over 60 miles an hour. To be honest, as long as it's around the UK speed limit of 70 miles an hour, then I would be perfectly happy. There is an upside to all of this though, which is that the 10 kilowatt hour batteries only take three hours to charge from your standard home power supply. That's a three pin plug. So if you just carry like a really long extension cable with you, then you will never have a problem charging. If you get low on charge somewhere and there's no charging station nearby, you could just run a cable to like the nearest Starbucks or something or to somebody's house and just charge in a few hours. Anyway, right, enough of my biased evangelism. If you want more info on the spec, then head over to electricbrands.de. I'll leave you with this. Cars are unnecessarily large these days. They are unsuited to our urban environments and they are inefficient, especially ICE cars. We need to rethink four-wheel travel and cars like the X-Bus get me way more excited than yet another SUV with a lackluster range. The addiction to these larger cars is fueled by FOMO and fear. People see their neighbors buying the new massive Land Rover Defender and they react by wanting something that's equally as flashy. Some people just want something that's big enough to not get absolutely demolished by a car of that size if they ever end up in an accident. And that's perfectly fair. It's on all of us to change this behavior. And when it's time for me to buy my next car, the X-Bus is the exact sort of thing that I will be looking at. We need to prioritize efficiency and utility over everything else. Right, Electroheads, thanks for watching. I'm really interested to know what you think about this car and where it sits on the current car landscape. So let me know. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.